Back to My Garden, Episode 7. Welcome to Back to My Garden. Discover your passion for gardening. Here is Dave Ledoux. This episode of Back to My Garden brought to you by Coffee Royalty. Is it really possible to lose 5, 10, even 20 pounds or more just by changing your coffee or tea? Find out more at www.coffeeroyalty.com. Attention gardeners, do you want to save time, save money, and have more fun? Discover the secrets to an incredible garden. Receive tips, strategies, and techniques from master gardeners from around the world. Check it out at www.coffeeroyalty.com. Back to my garden.com slash VIP. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world when you listen to this. I'm Dave Ledoux, and welcome to another edition of Back to My Garden, the transatlantic edition. Today, we have an overseas visitor coming in on the podcast. He's part of this movement in the United Kingdom, what they call allotment plots completely different concept than we have over here in North America. It's fascinating. I'm so excited to have him share it. He has uh, uh, been working the land now and documenting it. He's vlogging or doing this video blog on YouTube and on his blog. We're going to talk about that. He hails from rugby. Yes, the city that created the game in the Midlands in England. Uh, Please welcome to the show, Mr. Richard Lewis. Richard, welcome. Hi, Dave. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Very excited to have you today because your story is inspiring. Uh, I want to get to know you. Our listeners want to get to know you. So take a minute and just share a little bit about yourself. Okay. Uh, Well, obviously, my name's Richard. Um, I live live in rugby, as you said. Um, Yeah, I am. I'm I'm um, 36. I um, have a young family. I've been wanting to um, have an allotment since uh, university, really. I, um, I did plant science at uni and uh, really got the bug there, I think. Um, and then as soon as I got my first house, um, I was able to um, start growing my own vegetables in my back garden. And that's when I first put my name down for allotment. But here in the UK, it can take a long time. I put my name down for... Um, for one of my local uh, plots, but uh, there it's a case of you really have to wait for someone to uh, pass on before you can get one. They really are that sought after in certain parts of the country. Um, So the waiting list was probably about 10 long, so um, I I never did get one. But luckily I found another site where I I managed to get my plot. So And since then I've been uh, tracking my progress, as it were. Brilliant. Let's let's send everyone. Now we have a lot of people listening in their cars and on their iPhones running and at the gym. So when you're in front of a computer, head over to Richard's blog at www.theovergrownplot.com. And you can also follow Richard on Twitter at Overgrown Plot. And take us through what an allotment looks like, especially when you got your hands on it. <laughs> and on your blog, you also kind of have a guide to starting an allotment. I yeah. think it's not what most, especially North Americans, think. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, an uh, allotment, I, I know it's probably an alien concept. Um, in the UK, I think it started before the war, but certainly took off during the, the war when um, food was in short supply. Um, laws were passed that meant that if I think it's if six or more uh, residents in a local area petition the council, then the council are obliged to provide land for them to grow food and uh, for a minimal fee. So, for example, I pay um, ten pound, ten UK pounds for a year's uh, rent on my allotment, uh, which is about seventeen dollars in US terms. So it's absolute pittance. Um, and for that, I get a. Um, they, they measure them in rods, and I can't remember what what mine is in terms of allotment size. But it, I'm six foot four, and it's um, it's sixteen uh, by thirty of my strides. I've never actually converted that to meters or, or feet, but it's a fair old size. You know, I uh, I'm having trouble 
keeping it under control at the moment. Um, so I've started off small uh, and only dug dug over about a third of it. But over time, and you really do keep these things for uh, for a long time, so they can be in your um, possession for for you know years and years and years until you till you pass on really so you know i could potentially have this allotment till i till i till i die which could be a long time ago hopefully um but yeah they're uh they're they're really good and it's a good way to uh grow your own food if you don't have the space now for my american listeners who don't measure in rods or meters Mm. i looked at richard's photos on his blog looked through some of the videos my best guess, it's about 40 feet by 80 or 90 feet. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's three and a half thousand square feet. Yeah. That's a footprint of a house. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and Well, maybe a house in, <laughs> oh, right, in your yeah. part of the world. <laughs> yeah, not, no, not quite, you know the big sprawling in Texas. Yeah, in Texas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when you got the land, it was in pristine condition and yeah. just beautiful soil, right? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It had been used as farmland um, a few years beforehand, uh, before it was turned to a allotment. Um, so, but it had been, uh, they'd had a tenant on it, allotment tenant on it, a few years before, but I think it had been left for about a couple of years. So it was chest high in weeds. Um, the the My neighbouring plot holder had uh, kept it down and uh, strimmed the strim the weeds a few times i think you guys call it a weed whacker do you yeah weed whacker sure uh yeah yeah we, we call it a strimmer um yeah so th- he'd kept it down uh, quite uh, which is quite good for me to be honest um so yeah it was pretty 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 deep in weeds and it's ta- it still is um most of it as you've probably seen from my videos if anyone goes along to have a look uh, I just keep down with a with a little push mower, which does the job. The thing about allotments, you don't have any power and you don't have any water supply or anything like that. They tend to be out of the way places where you um, you really have to bring your own stuff. Um, yeah, it, it, it took, it's took it's taken a bit of work. I took it on in in October, I think. So I've been since then. I've just been digging it over and and pulling out the weeds and uh, forming the beds. So this is really your first season with, it is, with yes. plants in the ground. It is, yeah, completely. I, I've had I've had plants in the ground in my um, in my old house, uh, so I, I'm well used to growing uh, the various plants that I grow there, but uh, never on this scale. You know, we have listeners, Richard, from California, where they're in a five year drought where it might rain once a year. Yeah, and we. Over here on this side of the pond, think of England as foggy and rainy, and it's nothing like that anymore. I hear there's palm trees growing in London. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are. I, I'm from, um, I'm originally from Devon, which is right on the south coast, um, and uh, down on the, they call it the English Riviera, uh, Torquay, and there's there's palm trees all along the all, all along the beach there. Keeping that in mind, what is your garden like this year? Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's been a bit of a mixture, to be honest. We had a last few, uh, about a month ago, we had loads and loads of rain and the ground was completely sodden. Uh, my soil is really clay, so it all clogged together. It was right pain. Um, and now it's just complete opposite. So we've got, we've had sun for a, for a long, long time and it's, it's completely dried out and caked up. So I've, I've been down there watering and I've been having to take my own water down from the house. Uh, to water the plants because my the water butts I've set up just have run dry. So describe for our listeners a little bit about what you've decided to grow, and keeping in mind the clay soil and it's a first mm. season in the garden. What are you growing this year? Uh, I'm keeping it really simple. Um, I, I'm growing the sort of basic stuff, onions, potatoes, um, beetroot, uh, carrots, parsnips, but... This is me starting off the plot, so I, I really want to just focus on forming the beds and keeping the weeds back to start with. Um, I don't have any way of um, bringing on seedlings other than the coal frame in my back garden here at home. Uh, so one of my projects that will 
uh, be hopefully in the autumn is to is to build some kind of greenhouse on the plot so i can really um bring on a lot more seedlings a lot more a lot quicker uh, and cope with the scale of uh, of growing on the plot now you happen to take plant science at university yes is that because you grew up with it what was the conscious decision to to embrace gardening um i i don't know i, I i'm not sure i think i just it's something I always liked the idea of. Um, I, I didn't take plant plant science wasn't my um, I suppose you'd call it my the major in, major subject in the in the US, mm-hmm. but it um, the major was um, environmental science, and it had plant science modules as part of it, uh, and that's where I really you know we got to we got to get hands on in growing uh, I think we're growing tomatoes, uh, and really just testing how they grow in various soils. So, you know, that was what I really enjoyed. Um, And when I um, had the opportunity to start myself, I I took it up. Fantastic. Now, you happen to be documenting your gardening adventures on doing a video blog. What has that been like? Have you had any surprises and uh, how are you enjoying it? It, it, it's a lot of fun. I had to, I had to learn lots of things like how to edit videos and and uh, <laughs> all sorts of things like copyright, which has been new and it, and quite interesting. But it, it's a bit of a challenge. Um, I don't like doing it when there's other members, uh, other plot holders down on the site. Uh, so it's timing's a bit difficult, um, and also it takes away from the time on the plot. So. Recently, I've had to focus on working on the site rather than actual videoing it. Um, there's a bit of a conflict there, but uh, it, it is a lot of fun. It, I think it, it's worthwhile. I find people offer you tips and help and advice, and there's a kind of good community on YouTube of people who are who are doing similar things and help each other out. Uh, I really recommend it to anyone who's um, who's who's starting out or who's been doing it a while. It, it, it is good fun. Yeah, we joke around about that. Is if this was the 1960s, we'd have to yeah. go down to the public library, see if there's a book on gardening, sign it out, take it home, read it. Yeah, we take a lot for granted now. If there's, well, you were sharing just before we went live, uh, your garden is not without its challenges from a from a pest perspective. Yeah, what's that been like for you? Yeah, it's it, it, it's hard. We. <laughs> I suppose the main pests on, on the site, on the allotment site I have, are, are slugs. I think slugs are the bane of everyone's life, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, pigeons and uh, rabbits all, uh, all, all eat the crops. Uh, we also have a lot of mice uh, who pull up peas especially. Uh, you can plant a row of peas, and then uh, I certainly have this year, and, and then they, you, you pop down the site in a few days' time, and they're all coming up nicely. And then you uh, come down a few days later, and they've all completely disappeared. <laughs> those those pesky mice have taken them. I'm not sure about slugs in England, but in Los Angeles, California, mm. slugs like beer. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I used to do on my old uh, in in my back garden there uh, a few years back, and it worked quite well. And I don't never liked emptying them; it was a bit a bit disgusting. It's not unusual in California to put out a little saucer trap with a bit yeah. of beer and get fifteen or twenty slugs overnight. Yeah, you see, you soon fill it up, don't you? I uh, at the moment I've just put some um, blue pellets down, but I know it's not great. It's uh, I was getting desperate at the time, didn't have any beer, and no time to come back down the plot later. So uh, that's that's what I do. But beer traps will be the way to go in the future, I think. Now, this being your first season in the garden, I'm sure you're already planning next year. Is there anything you want to try as an experiment in your garden next year? Um, I, I'm, I've toyed about with a bit of um, brewing wine in the past, so I, I'm thinking I really want to try grapes um, because they certainly do grow in our climate. Um, so with the view to, to making my own wine, I think... Uh, Grapes is what I'd like to try. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Is that more of the, that. Uh, the purple ones or the green ones? Uh, I think I'd, uh, my, my wife likes white wine, so I think I'd go with the green ones. 
Man, some of my listeners now are just smiling from ear to ear because a lot of people listening to the podcast are city livers. They're living in apartments. They're growing a few pots on their balcony. Yeah. It's very romantic to think here you are. You got on the list. You got a piece of land from your county. Yeah. And like it's like a mini vineyard. Yeah, it could be. You could completely, you could just have vines that throughout the whole uh, whole plot. You could make a few bottles of wine that way, certainly. That's brilliant. Um, question on your parsnips. Yes. Do you harvest them in the fall, or are you going to leave them over the winter and bring them out in the spring? No, we, we in our family, we have a kind of a routine, that uh, a kind of a, um, a tradition, that's the word, where we... Um, we certainly harvest them in the fall or autumn here in the UK, um, but we we save a load for Christmas Day or the day or Boxing Day to um, to go and uh, dig up some uh, parsnips for the uh, Christmas dinner. My uh, parents live in oil country out in Western Canada, and they have a, they're big gardeners and they grew parsnips. Yeah, and they had a visitor from the big city, and he's not a gardener. But I didn't understand how naive he was. He said, do those things grow every single year? He didn't know the difference between, you know, a vegetable, a perennial, an annual. There's yeah. a lot. What is it like in England for people getting into gardening? Is it, uh, is it a big culture? Is it something that's growing? Is it popular? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's fairly big. You know, we have quite... Um, Television stars, you know, who are who are, are gardeners, um, television celebrities, I suppose you call them. Um, it is a big culture in the UK of, of gardening, and especially allotment growing in recent years. There was a TV on the uh, on the BBC uh, program on the BBC recently um, called the Great Allotment Challenge, or the Big Allotment Challenge. So it is a it, it is mainstream, as it were. I've been explaining to my US friends how. Most American TV originated in England, but seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you had pop stars. They have American Idol. Yeah. Dancing with the stars. They have dancing That's with right. the stars. And I say, look, in England, they have reality TV about gardening. It's coming to North America eventually. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. It, it, was, it was good. Very good. We learn a lot by talking to gardeners who share either a struggle or a failure. Mm. Being a relatively new gardener myself, it's not unusual to get emotionally attached to plants or an outcome. Do you have any mistakes that you've made along your gardening journey that you can look back and smile? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's not really about um, the plants themselves, you know, because I think we all have our challenges and, and, and failures in terms of growing, and it changes from year to year. I think my my main challenge has been um, my view of how it was going to be with the kids. Um, you know, it, I, I think I had this ideal idealized view where we were, we would all go down the plot and it, they'd play and run around and have a great time, and I'd show them how to dig dig uh, plant some seeds, and they'd go off and plant them, and I'd be able to work and uh, you know sort out the weeds at the same time. But it, it, it's been great and I've loved it, but it's really not been... Uh, I, I don't think you can uh, take the kids down the plot, certainly at the, the age my two are, which is three and six, and um, leave them to it. So when we go down the plot now, it really is just to, to play and to let them experience how, how to grow their own food. Um, but I, just, I, I don't even try to do any work down there now, so I, I, I make time to head down to the plot early morning on a Sunday, so I head down about 6 o'clock uh, in the morning while they're still asleep to, uh, to really get some proper work done. I, I don't think you can do the, do the two, certainly at this age. Uh, and that was a bit of a, a, a lesson. It, it took me a while to learn. You know, one of the side... Be- There's so many side benefits to gardening, uh, Richard, yeah. but I tell people when you move to a city or a new town, gardeners are some of the most friendly people you'll ever meet that like you can always yeah. talk about a garden yeah what's it like down where you're gardening with the allotments and the other allotment owners uh yeah it, it, it it's it's yeah it's amazing like the other day um 
my wife and two kids were down and we were just messing about and playing with the, the pond I'd built and, and they were digging up some of the potatoes. And uh, our, our neighbour had, um, he has a fairly large patch of strawberries and he gave us two punnets uh, and the kids just sat there eating them. It, it, was, it was really nice. Uh, whilst we just chatted about, you know, the slugs and the the, the dry soil, and it, it was really good. And I have another neighbour who, um, on the plot, who who um, has an abundance of um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, oh, I've completely slipped my mind. Um, not courgettes, cucumbers. Cucumbers. Yeah. Uh, yeah so he gave me a load of cucumbers uh, and a, a load of peas. So. It, it really is... Sh- everyone has a glut of something. When you have the, a plot the size of as we do, you know, you, you always grow too much of something. You know, it's usually uh, courgettes. <laughs> you know, if you have too many... I think, what do you call them? Do you call them zucchini? I was going to say, for my American friends that are going, what's a courgette? It's zucchini. Yeah, it's a zucchini. So, yeah, you only really need one or two plants, uh, certainly if you're just feeding a, a family. So, oh, yeah. And even then you get too many. In September, people put them in brown paper bags, leave them on people's doors, ring the doorbell, and run away. (laughs) Yeah, I can imagine. I might try that. Uh, One of my guests has a dear friend who got into gardening and planted 20 zucchinis her first season. Oh, my God. Nearly in tears. She didn't know what, like, we always plant two in case one dies, and it never does. Yeah, there's a there's a one of the plots that I thought about taking on when when I was offered this one. Um, had a they, he'd he'd obviously liked his um, butternut squash and, and I don't know it's marrows, or, which is is it's essentially a zucchini that's been left to grow massive. Um, but he had he had pretty much the whole site was covered in these. So they're, they're even now they're they're all just like a shell, a, a rotten hollow shell of all these um, massive. Uh, courgettes or zucchinis and and squash and pumpkins all littered throughout the plot my neighbor is actually a pumpkin farmer oh wow and sells pumpkins halloween over here is a real big deal he has a deer problem and in the fall any pumpkins that are left in the field the deer will come out and stomp them open and then eat (laughs) and eat and eat the deer eat so much they actually get sick I, I bet it. I bet it ferments as well. It's probably alcoholic, isn't it? <laughs> it could be. Um, yeah, it could be. I've never made uh, pumpkin wine, but I bet you it exists. I might. I might try that. Well, very good. I. Uh, I have this little segment in the podcast. It's uh, it's a game we play called Five Quick Questions. Go on. And this is your chance to drop wisdom over your gardening <laughs> to the, the people and give them resources and access. Are you ready to play? I am. Question number one. What do you think stops most people from getting into gardening? Getting into uh, time, I'd say, uh, but but stops them midway through weeds. <laughs> <laughs> My first season, I practiced on weeds. That was my... Very good. I, I like weeding. It's, it's, it's therapeutic, I think. Question number two. What is the best gardening advice you ever received? Um, I'd say little and often. Do little and often. Don't try and tackle too much. Mm. Yeah, you have 4,000 square foot garden. I bet you... I know. Ambition yeah. is one thing, but time is another. Yeah, that's right. I'm only like I'm only doing a third of it at the moment. Next year, I'll I'll do another third, so I'll have two thirds. Once you get the vines in for the grapes, though, they're kind of. I guess you still have to tie them, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I could just I could just put over half of it, and then that's half done, couldn't I? Yeah, your vineyard takes up <laughs> your garden. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. I'm, see, now we have a follow-up podcast next year to talk about wine. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Very good. Uh, question number three. The Internet is a big, big place, especially for gardeners. If you had just two websites to share with a beginning gardener, what would they be? Um, I think the f- <sighs> the obvious first one is YouTube. Um, just go there, type in vegetable growing or allotment growing, 
um, and you'll find loads of stuff. There's there's some great providers out there. So there's things like Claire's Allotment, the Horticultural Channel, uh, Dan and his Allotment Diary, Rick Van Man Channel. Uh, these are all just amazing channels where you can learn so much. And I, and I think seeing it in video format is the best way and seeing the mistakes they make. I love that. Thank you. That's the, excellent. Claire? Claire's Allotment. Mm-hmm. Um, the Horticultural Channel, Rick Van Man, and uh, and uh, Allotment Diary are all the ones that have been going for four or five years, and, and there's a lot of good stuff on their videos. What I'm going to do, because we have a lot of listeners in their cars, I'm going to put those links in the show notes on the blog at Back to My Garden on mm. on the Richard Lewis page, and that'll link right to those different YouTube. Make sure that you go to Richard's uh, YouTube channel and subscribe, go to his blog. Uh, social media is for sharing. So if you like Richard's stuff, make sure you share it on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, and, and say hello. And say hello, absolutely. That's the greatest thing I found out about gardening is you develop these friendships all over the world through Twitter. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Number four, right. I want to change it up. Because I've been asking people, hey, can you recommend a good gardening book? And they roll their eyes and say, there's too many. I'm in my third season gardening. My wife is in her 15th season. What's the best gardening book that I should read this year? Uh, I thought about this for a while. I, I, the one I use most is, um, and it might be a bit UK-centric, but I think most of it um, will apply to the US as well, is a, is a book called Vegetable Growing Month by Month by a guy called John Harrison. It, it's kind of... It's the, it's a fairly small book that will fit in your back pocket. It's the one I ca- have on the plot if I need to look anything up uh, or what I need to be doing or should be doing at any particular point in the year. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say that one. That's the best one I've, I've found. Fantastic. Question number five. What's the number one thing every gardener should try growing next year? Cool, good one. I, I, I think I think it has to be if you know it's an obvious one, but strawberries. Uh, it, it, I need to grow some strawberries. When uh, when my neighbour gave me two punnets of, of strawberries and the kids just sat there and eating them, you know they were they were so nice, so sweet. You know I don't think you can beat some strawberries. Do you guys have you pick farms for strawberries? We do, yeah. Yeah, we we call it, call it uh, pick your own. Pick your own. I remember as a kid, eat one, pick one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> your face is just red, your hand is eat red. Eat two, pick one. Eat two, pick one, yeah. yeah. Um, because I grew up with sandy soil, it was always raspberries. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. I like raspberries too. Yeah. Uh, we have a little raspberry patch. We started with two canes from the garden mm. center, and it's now 25 square feet. It's just... They, they, so, they soon spread under the ground, don't they? They do. They're just... Yeah. And I have no complaints because I'm a big fan. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're very nice. Do you, do you grow autumn ones or, or summer? No, this definitely summer. Yeah, uh, sorry, another, fall ones. <laughs> yeah, fall, autumn, yeah. Yeah, see, I have a little British. I say bloody brilliant, and uh, I've been known to have a, pi- a pint of Guinness now and again. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, me too. Very good. So everyone should grow strawberries. Our climate, our winters are so rough. A lot of people cover their strawberries with straw. In the yeah. fall, yeah. but your your winters, I guess you just kind of leave them alone, and they come up in the spring. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We we just leave them, leave them out. You know, they might die back a bit or get frost burn on the, on the edges, but uh, they they're pretty hardy to to our climate. Brilliant. You know, Richard, a half hour goes by really quick. I want everyone who's not in front of their computer as soon as they get home, head over to his blog at www theovergrownplot.com follow Richard on YouTube and watch his show Uh, join him on Twitter at overgrownplot say hello I'd like to uh, obviously thank you for being on the show today I want to give you the last word do you have a message of encouragement or a little bit of wisdom that you can share with our listeners Oh, that's that's a that's a good one I, I would say just just have fun um, it is a lot of fun. Uh, don't stress too much about things that go wrong because they happen to everyone. 
Richard is writing about the guide to starting an allotment. He's doing video blogging on his brand new 3,500 square foot garden. And it's just such a unique story. Uh, I want you all to head over to his blog and make sure you read and watch all his videos. They're very entertaining. Richard, I want to say thank you so much for being on the show today. That's my pleasure. It's been fun. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.